Oh, let's see what we got here. We got something from LAX. That is something from Nick. Okay, let's see what these things are. So first things first, what is this? LAX. Oh, oh, axles. Front and rear axle. These are your um, Amazon specials. Some battery or uh, turbo holders, servo trays, and some transmissions in red. Sweet. All right, let's see what Nick got us. Oh. Hmm. Mofo RC is um, the best the best we will we will definitely be looking at more of their products and showing off more of the cool stuff i just uh, found out they make a bunch of like customizable bead locks where you can change your offsets they're not it's not like built into the the wheel you have essentially you mount the hub to your axle and then you your wheel can mount to the hub using actual lugs like a real car a real truck so that's pretty cool we may have to have a look at those anyway that's today's mail. So today we're going to look at some of the axles that we got. Uh, we got an order and uh, we got some axles, uh, transmissions, and servo trays. These uh, are from AliExpress. I had said they were the Amazon specials. They're the AliExpress specials, but we're going to dive into them. Uh, they seem to be pretty good quality. I'm going to go ahead and tear them up and uh, we'll see what's inside. And then we'll get them installed on our, I think I'm going to do it on the belly dragger rig. So it'll be pretty fun. Um, these were $62, let me check something real quick, yeah, $62, and they also came with the drive shaft, so we'll look at the drive shaft, I'm not sure the length on the drive shaft, there was literally nothing on the description, it just says, uh, rear metal cover, front rear axle for 124 simulation model, all wheel drive, axial 24, uh, but it does not say, like, there's a couple pictures, and that's it, nothing else, but 62 bucks, figured I'd give it a shot, they're complete axles, uh, they seem smooth, so like I said, we'll open them up, look and see what's inside, and uh, get them installed. So this is what came in the package. Um, like I said, they uh, seem to be pretty good quality so far, at least from the outside. They're they're all metal, um, fully complete. Uh, they do seem a little a little stiff, not 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 crazy. I mean, that's that's nothing crazy. Um, but the steering linkage on here is a little stiff, but that's again no biggie. And again, I could probably install it as it is, and it's fine it's not overly stiff it's just a little bit um, that's not too bad we'll have to see if they're greased up in there uh, yeah so let's go ahead and first thing we want to do is weigh these these are one of our little these are amazon specials uh, i got four of these for 20 bucks to do weights uh you know, front back left right to see weight distribution but we're going to use it today to weigh our axles. We'll do a stock axle comparison. So this is a front. Mind you, this has the nuts on it, but it's front with the, uh, so it's got the, instead of plastic, these are probably, they look brass, so I assume they're brass. Uh, let's go ahead and just weigh the whole axle first. So that's 33.12 grams for the rear. And the whole assembly here is 42.48 grams. 47 grams. Uh, that's including the steering leads and all that. We'll pull that off and we'll weigh just the front by itself as well. And we'll pull off the brass. Now we've got all of our brass hubs and steering linkage removed. We'll go ahead and weigh it again just so that we can get a more accurate comparison to a stock axle with nothing on it. Um, these are brass steering knuckles, I think. No, these are aluminum. Those are aluminum steering knuckles. So front is 36.32. And the rear, 30.58. Of note, they put really tall screws on here. Uh, most of the time they use uh, flat Phillips head type screws. So that's interesting. Mind you, the hub does not hit. So if you're using the hubs that come with it, you know, you're totally fine. They don't hit once the uh, pin is in there. They basically sit right about there. 
which is nice because it means you can tighten the wheels all the way down and they only press onto the hub. They don't press into the bearing. So I, I almost always have to, I feel like I have to always trim down or shave down these either axle extensions or hub weights or whatever. Uh, the hex hubs basically have to always get shaved down so that I can tighten it down against the pin versus tightening it down against the bearing. So that's, that's good that these don't push against the bearing at all. I like that. So now we'll go ahead and open up the rest of, let's start with the front, I guess. We'll pull off the steering knuckles here. It's very tight. So it's actually tight on the knuckle itself, unless this uh, bushing is catching. No, they're just tight. So that, that's something that we'll have to remedy. Or maybe when we put the brass, the brass steering knuckles in, they will not be so tight. Let me get this bushing out of here. I just want to make sure it's strictly the knuckle against the axle and not something else, but pretty sure. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty, that's a tight fit. Good, I mean, good tolerances, but, and I'm sure it would wear in, and it might be due to the, the coating or the paint. So I'm sure if we just took a little sandpaper to it, it would be fine, but it's a, you can see it's a little tight. It just stays on there. But I kind of view that, I'd rather have it too tight than too loose, because you can't fix loose as easily. Like I said, if we just grab a little piece of sandpaper or something, I'm sure we could just sand it down. Just get a little bit of sanding going on here. And I bet you it would just loosen right up. Again, we, we're probably going to end up using brass knuckles. Maybe, maybe we'll start with these. <clears throat> I do have a set of brass knuckles, but they're intended for a different rig. Uh, so I don't want to sand it too much, just in case the brass knuckles are loose. Like I said, I'd rather have it too tight than too loose, because then you have a bunch of play and slop in your front end. And again, as they came from the factory, they're, they're not so tight you couldn't use them. But they would put a little strain on a stock servo, so not ideal there. dog bone here isn't there pretty tight too all right let's go ahead and just get the other side off and we'll take off the diff housing before we pull the knuckles out or the uh, dog bones excuse me got all their bearings front and rear bearings obviously Pushing bearings out, if they're stuck, do not push hard on the center ring. On the center ring here, if you push hard because they're stuck, you could bend it or ruin the bearing. So if, if they're if they're in there high, hard, you want to be you want to be careful. You don't want to push too hard on it. You want to try to get the outer lip, uh, but you also don't want to bind it because if you're pushing on the outer lip alone, sometimes it can bind. It's just a matter. Ideally, you would use something that will put equal pressure. Like if this if, you, if my socket here would fit, put equal pressure on the outside ring of the bearing. You want to put pressure here, not here. Putting pressure here, again, could cause deformity in the bearing and just ruin it. So always put pressure on the outside as much as possible, especially if it's a lot. These bearings actually sit fairly, they're in there snug, but they're not like super tight. So that was, that was nice. That's how they should feel. Okay, it looks like the uh, cup here has a little rubber bushing in there. Uh, no rubber bushing on the inside. Not that I can tell. No, there's no rubber bushing in there. Just on the outside here. Which is interesting. I don't know if the stock has that. I don't think it does. And I, I, I don't know if we should keep it. But we'll see. Maybe that takes some of the play out of it. As long as it's not rubbing on the outside of the bearing, um, then it's fine. As long as it stays on the inside of the bearing, that bushing isn't getting bound up on the outside. You're good to go. So it looks like got a little bit of machining metal in here. So that's not usually a good thing. But, yeah, that was machining metal. But that's why I'd recommend whenever you get something that's fully assembled, even, even if it's from a reputable source, um, you kind of want to disassemble them anyway and just make sure there's no flaws. Because if you throw an axle in 
and do a rig, especially if the rig's got a high speed motor or, you know, other things going on. Uh, you could easily have binding and just and burn things up if you're not careful. Now, if you know what you're doing and you know you're not moving, then you would stop. But there could be more resistance in there than, than should be. So you always want to check stuff, make sure that everything moves freely. Uh, that little piece of metal shaving, I, don't, I wonder where it came from. Let's go ahead and pull our dog bones out. Man, these are unusually tight. At least that one side is. Again, I do like the tight fitting. Tight fitting, I'd rather have tight fitting than loose because you can always sand down or gently dremel uh, stuff that fits just a little too tight, depending on what it is, I guess. Bear bearings, you can't really fix that, but that feels good. Our worm gear set is all brass and blue. That looks like steel, so hardened steel, that's good. Seems good. So then we'll pull out our inner bearings here. Oh, already fell out. We'll get this one over here. So all the bearings seem to feel really good. They, uh, they're all real smooth. Kind of ran through most of them as I was kind of looking at stuff, but they're all good. You know, they all feel nice and smooth. I mean, these manufacturers have been making bearings for years, so there's no reason the bearings would be a problem. So the brass gear and the worm gear appear like they only have the manufacturing oil on them, no actual grease. So that probably is why it was a little, little tight, a little bindy maybe. Uh, again, I think this stuff is manufactured to very good tolerances. And over time, as they kind of get broken in, it will run even more smooth. So I, I think this is, and for the money so far, this front axle seems to be very quality. Yes, not brass knuckles. That's unfortunate because most people replace their knuckles with brass knuckles, not a brass diff cover. But again, if you're looking for a stock replacement, uh, this is better than stock by far. At least from a, if you're looking for metal, right? If you're looking for something a little heavier, this is definitely good. Uh, let's go ahead and get it back together and then we'll take the rear part and just see how that one looks. Shouldn't be much different. One thing to point out, the worm gear does have a little rubber bushing, so that's good as well. For sure, definitely want that in there. So when you're putting your gear back in, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're not get, your axle's not getting hung up on your bearing. Make sure that your bearing and axle are going all the way through, so I'll, I'll pull this, I usually won't have this in here yet, I'll slide the axle in, make sure the bearing is all the way seated and that the axle goes all the way through, um, and then you know your bearing is aligned. And then as you're putting in the axle with the gear, you kind of need to hold the gear, because it will drop all the way back, and you'll have a hard time lining it up, but you'll basically just get your nails under there, hold the gear, and make sure it's right about where it needs to be, and, and you can kind of spin the axle as you're trying to get it to drop into the slot. Uh, and you'll know once you get there, you just kind of have to fiddle with it, it's not, not too hard of a, a setup there, but just something to keep note of. Uh, you might be getting bound up and you can't get your uh, you know, your axle shaft in and you're hitting on the bearing actually. So once you know you're not hitting on your bearing, you're good to go. See, like right now, I might be hitting on the bearing. And these bearings are pretty well seated in there. So. so when putting this together, I was getting some odd binding and I thought at first that it was possible that the one of the axles was actually the actual shafts was actually a little bit bent uh, but then I swapped them it was a side and I swapped it over to here and it seemed fine so I tried you know, the other axle on this side the actual shaft on this side and it was doing the same thing it was kind of it wasn't quite as smooth as I would like it had like a little bit of a bind at you know one point of the turn so then I was thinking man maybe one of the actual axle housing uh, is bent on this side and um, I took a little deeper look though and noticed that the there was a little bit of machining on the inside where the bearing sits and the bearing wasn't sitting completely flat and so there was the, the bearing being a little tweaked on this side was causing the axle shaft to bind as it spun 
So it's not the actual housing, and it wasn't the actual shaft itself. It was, well, I guess it is the actual housing. There's just a little bit of machining in there. So I just basically took my screwdriver and kind of smoothed it out and cleared it out. Um, it might have also just been part of how the how I set the bearing in there. So just be aware. Make sure you're setting your bearings in completely flat. Uh, make sure there's no binding in the bearing uh, being tweaked. Uh, sometimes there's little things like that that you miss, and you, you put it all together, and you don't test it along the way, and you're like, why is it binding? And you got to take the whole thing apart. So always kind of test your movements and test fit everything as you're putting stuff back together. It's very important. So another thing that I try to do is um, just like your drive shafts, uh, and I don't know how much it really matters, but I try to keep my dog bones in phase with each other. So basically they're facing the same direction. If you put these into the gear, uh, basically 180 degrees, they'll be a little off. I just like to make sure that everything is concentric, you know, is the same on both sides. So uh, I feel like that might help keep steering from acting funny or having uh, double bumping. So where one side is bumping as it turns because you're turning sharp and then the other side will and one side will and the other side will at least they'll be doing it at the same rate. Um, if anybody knows if there's if that's if that is relevant, you know, comment below. May, maybe I'm way off. Maybe they need to be off phase. It doesn't make sense to me, but maybe there's a reason for it. If there is, tell me in the comments. I'd like to know that's something I'm not a whole lot educated on. So um, somebody who knows better than me, let me know. So we're going to go ahead and keep putting this back together. And uh, I'm going to get some grease in there. You can see we're nice and free. It's got plenty of nice movement in there. Uh, like I said, that little issue was simply just a little bit of a uh, high tolerance. Again, this is all very high tolerance, much more so than the stock gears or stock axles. And uh, it's, it means that the littlest bit of machining, just a tiny bit of burr from the machining or extra paint uh, when they coat it is causing it to be a little tighter than it needs to be. And that was causing a whole lot of binding just because the bearing was sitting a little off and a little high. So basically I cleaned out the back where the bearing sits and now it sits more flush. And again, it's much more smooth, much, much more smooth. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this atomic ball diff grease. Uh, now, of course, this isn't a ball diff, it's a worm gear diff. Uh, it should work the same. It's uh, it's not very, it's not super thick, but it's just enough to kind of keep it nice and lubed in there. And uh, like I said, I think that it will help quite a bit to keep it running real well. This is used in uh, the Mini Z's and you know, they're pretty, pretty high performance. So it should work just fine in here. You can also use some thrust bearing grease on your bearings just a little bit. If you wanted to coat the bearings, uh, I would try to avoid coating it on the inside near the gear and just kind of just a little bit if you're going to do it. Um, on this one, I'm not going to because these bearings seem to be fairly greased for the most part. They're not they're a little, little wet, but not overly done. And like I said, I think this will be, this will be plenty for these uh, worm gears. So I went ahead and took the rear part and I also greased it up. Everything was the same as the front, uh, so we had zero binding. Uh, so that's good. Uh, these guys are little washers. You could probably remove them. I would think the screw head would actually still hit onto the bearing as it should, but the washers are fine. They're not hitting on anything. They just make this stick out a little bit uh, more than it maybe needs to. Again, you can also replace them with the uh, countersunk or flat you know, flat screws that are using the Phillips head style. A lot of, uh, I think the axles, some of the axles come with it, or maybe, I'm not sure, but there's some some parts kit that comes with those. Uh, maybe it's the, I bet you it's a hex, aluminum hex, or the wheel weights. Because when you put wheel weights on there with an extended axle, it's going to be right up against your bearing, and they usually put a washer on the bearing so that the, there's a little bit of spacing there. But, uh, yeah, either way, these are fine unless you're rubbing and then you can figure out a new solution. Uh, also on these diff covers, there were large screws and small screws. Large ones go in the middle, the small ones go on the top or bottom, if you will. And uh, don't over tighten these. If you tighten the, I mean, even making them snug seems to give you a lot of resistance. And there you can see there's quite a bit of resistance in there. It's not freely flowing, if you will. But if we loosen these, just back off like a half turn. Uh, you will see a difference. Now it's a little, little more free flow in here. There's basically no resistance in there. So just make sure if you feel like there's any kind of binding in there, you, you, you know, after you've tested it and it wasn't binding until you put the diff cover on, then clearly your answer is your diff cover is a little too tight. So just back them off just a little bit and you should be good.
Worst case, you could always put a little, little tiny drop of Loctite on the end of the screw before you put it in, and then don't tighten it all the way down. Uh, you can have it even more loose. Let's back these out a little more. I'm just kind of curious how much. Well, it's pretty loose already. So is that one? That one was still kind of tight. All right. Yeah, I mean, those are that's pretty pretty loose. Uh, another thing that you could do to to fix that fix it uh, is take the worm gear out and sand the end of the worm gear on the inside here. Uh, just sand it down a little bit. Or, uh, which I have not tried, pull the um, the O-ring out, the little rubber O-ring, because that might be pushing against the bearing, causing it to be very tight. Again, I would probably not try to do that stuff uh, unless it's really bad. I would just tighten your uh, diff cover down enough and back them out a little bit, and you should be good. A little bit of resistance in there is fine. Again, as long as it's not binding, as long as it's smooth the whole way, you're good. It doesn't need to be super loose. And again, over time, it will break in. These are these are brand new, but as you run it, it's it's going to break in and it's not going to be super tight. And if you find yourself losing diff cover screws, like I said, you can you can use a little bit of Loctite. Or since it, if you've run it enough, maybe you can tighten them down a little more uh, later on, and you won't have any of the the resistance in there. But again, dude, these uh for the price, these axles are seeming good. So this is what we're going to put the axles on. Funny enough, this one. Uh, still has stock axle housings so we're, we're gonna we're gonna kind of just use the metal ones on here uh, it's already it's got extended plus four axles uh, and we've already got aluminum or sorry brass steering knuckles and this so it's kind of a waste for all these other extra parts off these because really we're just using the axle housing and we're not even gonna use the diff oh I guess I need to put diff covers on this I just realized I don't even have diff covers on this thing yet so we're going to get some diff covers on there. I think I have a brass. Worst case, we'll use these off there uh, until I replace them with brass. But the only thing we're using is the axle housing, realistically, and the internals, so the worm gear and the bearings. Outside of that, we're going to be using a lot of what we already have, unfortunately. But then these parts will go on a different rig. The uh, We're going to try to get our spare parts build back up and get a stock rig going. There's still a lot of stock stuff on this, but we're getting there. We're getting there. It's a pretty cool little rig. Runs good as it is now, but I figured over time we'll just upgrade stuff and get rid of some of the plastic. I know some people like to keep plastic because it works well. I got some review uh, links coming. They're the Mantis links, so those will be going on here. Keep an eye out for that. Uh, let's get going. So we're going to go ahead and weigh out the axles again. Here's the front axle I took off. Mind you, this has the Enjora links and brass. So it's going to be heavier, but it's 41.28. And then and there's the rear. Now, mind you, this is all stock, except it has plus fours on it. And it's 14.67. compared to the rear here, 30.67. So a significant weight difference there between these new ones and the stock, even with the plus fours. So here's the stock front axle with no steering knuckles or anything. It's 12.53. And we'll compare that to this aluminum or metal. It's at 27.89 or 85. So again, that is a huge difference 27 versus 12. It's literally double double the weight. And what's good about this is it's it's unsprung and non-rotating mass. So it's not up high, it's low, and again, no rotating mass, so it's not like it's heavy wheels or brass, so it's hurting your servo or your motor. It's it's strictly the best kind of weight you can have. Uh, realistically, your best weight's gonna be your axle housing, your diff covers, uh, potentially your servo tray, uh, we actually have new servo trays to, to add in. These are just aluminum, so I don't know if they're much heavier than the stock. Now, I guess we could just go ahead and uh, 
weigh out this stuff as well. So we're going to go ahead and put all of the new bearings and axles and more bearings and screws maybe. Maybe we can get these screws on there. Okay. And that guy there. And that gets us in for a total of 11.87. Mind you, this is all the stuff that came from the AliExpress. 11.87 for our steering links and our steering knuckles and our axles, stock length axles, bearings, all that stuff. 11.87. And then obviously our uh, our brass knuckles that were on there and our Endura steering links and whatnot, and that's 28.68. So clearly we're gonna be using this uh, versus the stuff that came with it. But the stuff that came with it is definitely not bad if you're looking for aluminum uh, versus brass. So that's good. This will probably go on a more stock build at some point uh, versus the plastic. Maybe we'll weigh it out and we'll see. So I wanted to point something out on, out, when you do aftermarket parts and your screws and stuff or start to get different lengths or different tolerances, when you start to mix and match stuff, there, there can be issues sometimes. There were no real issues here, but one thing I wanted to point out, I, you can see that my steering knuckle screw, it's not even all the way tight, is long enough to almost hit the dog bone. And actually in, in this, it looks like it is, but it's not. If I tightened it a little more, it would. But be sure, again, to check all the stuff and make sure everything is working as it should be before you are completely assembled. Always test along the way. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna take this screw back out and I'm probably just gonna dremel off just a little bit of it. Uh, and I gotta make sure all the other screws aren't close to the dog bone because, and that's odd that that one screw is, but who knows, it could be just a slight difference in even these brass knuckles or maybe it's just that screw itself and it was never hitting on the other ones. I'm not sure, or maybe it was, I just never noticed um, how close it really was, but that could cause a major issue and uh, you don't want that happening. These dog bone pins will sometimes slide as well. If you're running them hard, they'll kind of get knocked out one way or another. And if this got knocked out just a little bit, you're going to be hitting there and you're going to be wondering, why am I not moving? And could potentially burn some stuff or break some stuff. So you want that inside there as clear as possible. So we definitely need to take the screw down if it's uh, protruding out past the uh, axle housing mounting points, so, all right. Another thing that it could be is that our bushing looks to be low or short, and this is the same one that we were using on the previous build. Like I said, maybe we just didn't notice it, but that bushing being so short uh, could be causing issues. So you can always switch that out as well. Now our front end assembly is complete. We put back on our Injora and our brass. And then this is the AliExpress axle. Those have our plus fours. We're at 56.57. I think we should put this on there. 13 gram brass diff cover. What do you say? Out of the uh, hot racing 13 gram. Now we are uh, ready for a measly 66.55 grams of front bias non-rotating, unsprung weight. Seems like we should be uh, should be the right way to go. So I figured since we're using this stupid stock plastic, we're gonna go ahead and put on the red too. So now we've got the aluminum. This was part of our AliExpress special order. And these are, uh, I think like nine bucks. And they seem good quality. I had no issues pairing it to the axle housing and the diff cover. Um, sometimes if they don't want to sit right on top of the axle housing and you have to dremel them out or trim the axle housing so that they sit in there all the way and you can get the screws through the, this went through no problem I thought I was going to it didn't look like it was gonna work but it, it went in no problem everything's uh, fit it's great so far we ran into another little issue the drive shaft stock drive shaft anyway the drive shaft that comes with it works fine but uh, I needed a longer drive shaft for this build so we're just using the stock drive shaft however the slot for it is much smaller than the drive shaft that comes the, the aftermarket. Let's see if I can compare it to the stock. So here's a stock, and then here is the aftermarket. So I don't know if you can tell, but this one's just a little bit. It's got the the notch isn't cut as low, right? So this notch right here isn't cut quite as low. It could be cut down a little further. 
and that's how it is on here. It's kind of hard to tell even side by side, but they are just barely different. Uh, however, m most aftermarket drive shafts are just a full circle, and then the, the screw is what holds it in. To use the stock, you basically just have to kind of trim it out a little bit. Uh, so we'll take our Dremel or even an X-Acto knife and just try to just trim it out and get ourselves a little bit lower platform here so it's dropped down just a little bit and then it'll fit a lot better. The main thing you want to be careful of when you're trimming it is that you don't make it off balance. So you want to make sure it still spins evenly. Uh, if you were to trim too much off of the bottom or the top as you're doing it, you basically will end up kind of either, well, basically off balance. This isn't exactly what it would do, but it would be, you would see it rise and fall if, compared to my finger here. If we were to make this flat, you would see Let's get this in a little bit. I still need to trim it a little more. But you would see the, so you can kind of see it rise and fall a little bit already. So you just want to be careful that you're trimming on the correct side, on the inside of it, so that this isn't going up and down. Um, a little bit is okay, but ideally you want it as center as possible. Uh, so, like I said, this still is very tight. And our hole is not aligning yet. So we need to trim just a little bit more uh, to get it to fit down in there a little better. Also make sure you don't mess up your, your ball joint when you're trimming because your drill bit can go through. If you were to stick it all the way in there, you're going through and you can mess up your ball joint in there. So don't do that. Always make sure when you're putting your drive shafts back in that they're in phase. Again, I think I've talked about this in another video, but in phase means that your screw holes are both the same direction. This will prevent things from like, it'll prevent it from shaking. It basically lets your uh, U joints, I called them ball joints earlier, but your U joints um, move at the same uh, at the same time essentially so if they're out of phase and your screw hole here is like 90 degrees it's facing this side and this one's facing up or they're completely opposites then that means the joints here are uh, basically moving at different times and so it'll cause some kind of weird binding or your 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 you'll get some of this where it starts twisting just when you're throttling or going over certain you know when you're articulating a certain way it'll actually just start moving it uh, because your phase is not in sync so just make sure that your screw holes are facing the same direction. So we got the new axles all on. And we're using basically just, we're using the internals. We switched, swapped the actual axle shafts back to our, our plus fours, because that's what was originally on there. Uh, everything here is those axles, the express axles. Same with this. Uh, we have different knuckles on here. We have the brass knuckles on here. And then obviously the big brass guy and our steering links are all uh, the not AliExpress stuff. So those are in Jura and um, the plus four axles as well. But the metal axles and their internals, fantastic. And they give us a good amount of weight. It's uh, no longer the plastic stock. Some people like them. Some builds are good with plastic stock. This one I'm just kind of going all out on. Um, plus I wanted to see what those axles look like. So if you ever needed a new axle, or you wanted to run uh, rear steering, maybe you could swap and just put your uh, stock axle on the back and then put the heavier uh, Express on the front. I think they're like 25 bucks, maybe, for the front axle alone. So it's almost the same cost as a stock axle, but it's gonna be all metal. Uh, so I definitely think that's a better, it's a, a good upgrade if you're gonna do four wheel steering and you need another front axle. Um, I mean, I would almost just get two, but that's, that's just me. Um, so yeah, we're good. Uh, everything, nothing's binding. Nice and smooth movement. All around. Seems good. Now we're going to get everything back together. All right, we got the wheels and tires back on. We're all mounted up. Got our Liberty straps on. New axles on. Power cable out the hood. Okay. Yeah, we're looking good. I do think I need to do some work on the front a little bit as far as the limiting straps concerned. We also have to adjust our hole for our servo because we're basically stopping on it. Um, but, yeah. Got our range of motion here. And our rear. Seems all right. I like it. 
kind of a belly dragger hot rod lip going on. Still got some work to go, some tweaking to do, but like I said, this front servo has got to do something with this. So I guess we're going to have to go further up into the body. Um, yeah, I like the axles. I like the uh, limiting straps. I think we did good there. Well, I hope you enjoyed and learned something from the axle installation there. We went ahead and fine-tuned some stuff, trimmed up our uh, servo hole in the body, uh, and got our limiting straps a little more dialed in. We've got a whole video on the limiting straps, so be sure to check that out if you're interested in the proper way to do limiting straps. Also, uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns about something I did, or uh, just want to say thanks, please comment. We love the comments. Uh, it's awesome to interact with everybody. So um, yeah, tell us what you think we should do on our next video. If there's anything you're interested in learning about, we can talk about that. Uh, until then, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button. I appreciate all the feedback and all the views. Uh, until next time, be sure to get out there and smash, bash, and crash your cars.